Welcome to the 10th EG screencast on grid computing brought to you by the Direct User Support Team. During this screencast we will discuss the Hydra service, which is an encryption and decryption solution for the grid users. The Hydra service may be used to encrypt and decrypt files residing on both the user interface and the storage elements. In order for the user to take advantage of this service, he or she must register an encryption key. The encryption key is a sensitive piece of information which is used to encrypt and decrypt files. It is stored in a service called the Hydra Key Store. The Hydra keys, after being generated, are split and distributed to at least three key stores and can be reconstructed from just two. In the unlucky event where a server is offline, for example due to a power outage or if it gets compromised, the user can still reconstruct his key from the two servers while the attacker cannot. A typical user scenario would involve four steps. The first step is to obtain a valid proxy using the by now familiar command VOMS proxy init to a virtual organization where the Hydra role is enabled. After that, the key registration can take place with the command glight eds key register and a name for your key. The created key is stored in the Hydra key store and there is no need for you to register a new key every time you need to encrypt a file. As soon as the Hydra key is available, the desired file can be encrypted. The command is glight eds encrypt followed by the name of the encryption key, the name of the file to be encrypted and the file name of the output. The syntax when decrypting is done with a similar way. Let us try and use the Hydra service in practice. Here is a file precious data containing some sensitive information. As it is obvious, we want to encrypt it. The first step is to create a proxy with an enabled Hydra role. Of course, there is no need to do it every time if one was created earlier. For the user to encrypt a file, a user must possess an encryption key. So, the second step is to register one. Here, we use the name screencast underscore key. Using that encryption key, I can now encrypt my files. I usually choose a name with extension encrypted just to tell them apart from the original. The contents of the encrypted file are in a non-human readable form, so we can assume that they are indeed encrypted. When the time comes to read the data back, the glitds decrypt command is utilized producing the original file. The content seems to be the same with the original file and the diff command proves us right. Now let us practice the knowledge we have obtained on an almost real case scenario. If a user has some sensitive data, for example some statistical data for a country, and he or she wishes to process them over the grid, the user has the option to encrypt them and store them to a storage element. The user can then retrieve the encrypted files from the storage element, decrypt them and process them whenever he or she wishes to. As an example, we use a simple Python script that calculates the mean value of each field. For the purposes of this screencast, we have already uploaded the encrypted data to the storage element in order for us to submit the job to the grid. The file is called sensitivedata-encrypted.csv. In the JDL file, everything is normal except for the now mandatory field requirements which needs to be set properly. This field must be set in order for the worker nodes to be able to encrypt and decrypt the files using the Hydra service. The executable bash script is simple. The first step is to retrieve the encrypted file from the storage element and decrypt it. Then we run the main program and encrypt the resulting file. The encrypted file is then uploaded to a storage element. The LFC and LCG environmental variables must of course be set before using the storage element. As usual, we submit this job to the grid and wait for it to be finished. In the screencast dimension, the job is done and we are ready to get the output. We choose to store the output in the results folder while the encrypted results are in the storage element. The next step is to retrieve the encrypted results which reside in the storage element and decrypt them. The file results does encrypted is the desired output. We then decrypt the file and inspect its contents. It seems to contain the information we were expecting as well as the files std.out and std.r. The option of unregistering your encryption key is also available, but be sure when you practice this right because you won't be able to decrypt any encrypted files that are left undecrypted. This concludes our screencast of the Hydra service. Join us in our next screencast where we will be discussing the features of the tool AMGA. Until then, on behalf of the Direct User Support Team, thank you for watching.